we have Cliff, a web designer. How are you, Cliff? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. So uh, how old were you and what was your first job? I was about 18 when I got my first job. And uh, I ended up working with a local company that uh, worked in sales. But my job was to be the front desk receptionist. Okay, so you were 18. Did you drive to work? Yes, I did. I was fortunate enough to have a car that my parents helped me out with at the time and use that to get to and from employment, which is good. How did you get your job? I had a family member who worked in sales who knew of the opening, and since I hadn't had a job, like a real job at the time, I've done volunteer stuff and other side stuff at the time, it was my first real on-paper job. Okay, so was it what you expected it to be? Yes and no. It I mean, it was a receptionist job, so you're answering phones and pretty much sitting there all day. I wasn't prepared for the level of the uh, extreme phone calls to come in from customers, most of them customers who were not happy with service. Mostly, you never really hear from happy customers. You know, they, they're already set with the salespeople, and then they're all done. So, so you got a <laughs> lot of angry calls. What was your most... Mm-hmm. Which one do you remember the most? Uh, the one I remember the most would be what I was. Th- uh, what would be the uh, customer standoff, where a gentleman called, and he wanted to speak to somebody, anybody, and no matter what extension I threw him to, nobody was picking up. Then after he realized that he could keep calling the number back with different phones to tie up the lines, he blocked out any other caller coming into the company, and I had no one to turn to. I had no help. So after an hour and a half, I finally got him to somebody, and then few minutes later found out that he had made a purchase with the company and was entitled to a $50 rebate that they usually send out within a month or so. It was not even a week since he had purchased the product. (laughs) So uh, I'm getting a feeling that you didn't like your job. Is that true? Mm, Not exactly. I mean, it was the first job and you know, it's, you don't, it never expect to get your dream job on the first try, but it was definitely an eye opener. Okay, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, when I was a kid, I was big into watching cartoons and animated stuff, so I really wanted to be an animator and work in the field, something involving making something in a media-based form, which over time I grew up and realized, well, I never really grew up. <laughs> I make that clear. I, would, I still would love to pursue doing animations on the side when I have time. Uh, I've made a couple online, but I looked at the amount of work and the lack of jobs available in that field and then found that you know I started getting a passion for video production and which in turn to also a love of working with media on the web and then building web designs and development for making sites and video for the web too. <laughs> okay so you're a web designer right? Mm-hmm, that is correct. So uh, explain what do you do for your current job? For my current job I work with a local company called Time to Save which is a company that tries to help people save their money through shopping online, making wise choices about what to buy instead of just the usual places and earning money back for savings that'll grow over time. And when I was brought in, my job was to take what they had and, you know, rechange it up to something that was more accessible, something that could be viewed on mobile, something that modern systems can look at, and something that's easily usable by any user. And it's, a, it's an ongoing process. I think it's in a great position now from what it used to be, but it can always get better. It can always get easier to use. It can always get more user-friendly. Did your first job influence your decision in becoming a web designer? It influenced my decision to never be a receptionist again. <laughs> <laughs> and it definitely was eye-opening to how the opposite side of sales works, which I've also had jobs in sales in the past too. I had a, in one of my other former lives, I used to be a uh, sales rep at a uh, video game retailer working the counter trying to sell games to people and angry customers there too. And, and you're, you're never going to have a job where there isn't going to be people who are angry. The trick is, is to understand what the problem is. Instead of just, you know, letting people yell at you and just be upset and be like, I hate my job. Just understand why they're upset. And especially if you're 18, it's really hard to not just get mad and want to just throw down the phone. And I've, I've had my cases in the past where I've had to just put the phone down or tell a customer, I'm sorry, I don't think I can help you, you know, which in retrospect, yeah, was immature of me at the time. But at the same time, it, because you, you're not prepared for it, you're not ready, they don't teach this in school. They don't tell you that people are jerks. <laughs> not everybody, of course, but when somebody's angry, they don't think straight. You know, as you probably had happened in your life as well, too. Yeah. And then you look back and you're like, oh, what was I thinking? You know, and then just 
the best thing you can do is if you do make a mistake, you just take it in, apologize for it, and move on, and then try to solve their problem. You know, hopefully it doesn't get to the apology part, but even then, even when a customer like calls up and says, you sold me, rah, 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 even though you did not sell them anything, you had nothing about it, just apologize, sorry for the inconvenience, we will do all that we can to help you, and give good customer service. And it really makes you think from the other, way, other side, when you're walking in a store and you're frustrated about something, you don't take it out on the person at the desk, you understand that they're just there to collect a paycheck too. They're just there to take care of their life. So to be like, I know that this isn't your responsibility, but can you give me a manager who can help me, or can you help me out with this? You know, It gives you a better appreciation for that type of work, for working food service, retail, sales. You know. Okay. So were there any youth that you wor worked with you during your job? Not really. Uh, the front desk was kind of a lonely place. <laughs> and um, the upstairs sales team were kind of passing through every once in a while. Most of them were at least 18 or over, so there wasn't really a lot of youth. Um, had experienced more youth in uh, programs with local places such as public access <laughs> and other worthwhile programs. Um, but other than that, it's in the job field, usually they want people who are of age, so you see more customers that are younger. If you had to describe your first job with one word, what would it be? Anxiety. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> the, the fear of every time the phone rings that you aren't sure if it was going to be somebody just asking for somebody in the building or if it was going to be somebody who was upset about their product or think that you can help their problem. And even worse, as you're in the middle of trying to listen to one person's call, three more lights come on <laughs> and having to pick and choose who gets dropped and who gets picked or do you pick them all up and go back and put them all on hold. But I will say that it really forced me to make those decisions. Like the technique of answering all the calls and saying, please hold, please hold, please hold, and then working the way back. You know, that's something where like, here's my issue. I'm having too many people calling at the same time. They all need attention. And no matter if you're like, well, maybe they don't need attention. Maybe they can just, they'll call back. No, the employer wants you to give them all your attention, which is understandable. When you're 18, you're like, why is it? Well, he does, he just sits in an office all day. Why does he care? But then you get old and you realize, well, he's running a business. He can't control every single person in the building at all times. He's leaving that to managers to delegate. Or in my case, I really didn't have, I had like maybe one person to talk up to who was almost never there. So I had to do a lot of it, you know, from my own instincts. And you, t and you learn those skills with dealing with customers and just trying to do general problem solving. A lot of employers love it when you can take a problem and instead of freaking out and saying, I can't do this, this isn't my job, you sit there and go, okay, let's figure out a way to solve this. And then we go on from there. Would you recommend this job to anyone else? Mm, yes and no. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd definitely say it's, it's a stressful job, or it was a stressful job. Um, but I would say in terms of finding a first job, obviously spend your time when you're not at the job trying to hone in on your skills. You know, if there's something you can create, something you do, build a portfolio, build a resume. And even if the resume isn't work related or uh, job related, you know, just building something up to get you going and then use the jobs you have just to show that you know how to work in a workspace and then build good references that way. You know, be very friendly with your employers and everything. Um, that particular job, I don't know if I would have uh, recommended that to anybody. But hey, there are some people who are probably really good at it. Some people who are just like, I don't care. People call the time mad. I can handle it. And those people are perfect for that job. Everybody is perfect for something, even if it's not what other people think that you'd be perfect for. So just play to your strengths. And if it's a job like, you know, flipping burgers, there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, if it's like if you have that as your first job, be proud. That it's like, you know what, I'm doing this, I'm gonna see what it's like from the other side. And then when customers, you know, dump all over you and you get upset about it, you'll be like, wow. That could have been me on the other side. And then really makes you realize, like, you know what? Maybe we should treat some people, these people, a lot better, especially considering how much they get paid. You know, a lot of these starter jobs are paying barely minimum wage. A lot of them, you know, there are a lot of people who have kids at a young age. And then a minimum wage is what you're getting paid, but a babysitter costs 15 bucks an hour. You know, it, that's not making money. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, it's tough. And so in a place, especially with finding any job, a first job, when you have no resume and no experience, it's tough. So playing to your strengths, building, you know, works that showing what you do part time, knowing certain people who can back you up as references, network building, building friends at the jobs you have for the future. I know you asked previously if I 
kept in touch with Anna's from the first job. I didn't really, but in the future, I definitely did. And they are the ones that I've kept in touch with for the longest time, especially in terms of if something goes bad and I have to look at other employment options. They're the ones that back me up with a phone call saying, I've worked with him, he's a professional, you should hire him. And that is worth its weight in gold right there, if nothing else, really. Okay. So if you had to do this job one more time, <laughs> I mean, do your first job all over again, would you do it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably explore other options. Okay. Um, but at the same time, it, that's an interesting question because do we go by what I know now going back then? You know, I guess, because if, if I didn't, I probably would have made the same decision. Um, who knows? I mean, maybe it'd be fun to try it one more time just to see how I'd change things up. Um, although part of me would kind of probably go back having a, yeah, yeah, it's this job pff, attitude. Because it's not really, you know, with all the side things I've done, web design, video, and everything, I tend to be more of a creative, more of somebody who wants to make things, f solve problems in doing so, and put something out there, versus somebody who's just picking up a phone and redirecting calls. It's like, I'm here for the paycheck. So it's really tough to build that type of attitude when you have the mindset of wanting to like go home and make something, you know, when you're sitting at your desk just saying, I just want to just create, put something out there. And there are plenty of things out there for employment that even some people who've made their own careers out of doing that sort of thing. So just wanting to create. Uh, my wife, for example, uh, quit her job back in November to work full time for herself making custom confetti for people. And she's had many people have come up to her uh, uh, Martha Stewart, Monster Incorporated, Monster like the headphones, yeah. you know, all like asking for different types of shapes. Uh, she just did one recently for the Girl Scouts, you know, doing their logo and, you know, who, you know, getting that outreach of just doing this. And who would have thought that, you know, there'd be a market for that. But she saw it as something she wanted to do and gave it a shot and she's doing something for herself, you know. So who knows? Your first job may not even be working for somebody. It could be putting something out there. You know, you decide you like video games and you're like, oh, I want to learn how to make one. And you're 14 at your computer and you learn how to make the next Minecraft. And by 17, you're already banking a lot of money. It's, it's happened. I've seen yeah. reports online of people who their kids who've started their own businesses that have their parents with trust to make sure everything's in place for when they become 18 to legally do so. But, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It's, but that's because their mindset wasn't go out and get a job. It was do what's, what you think is passionate for you, what you believe in and see what comes of it from there. So if you had one tip to give to someone trying to get their first job, what would it be? If you're just trying to get your first job for the sake of just, I need money, I need a job, be open-minded. Because <laughs> especially if your resume has got almost nothing on it, no education other than some high school, maybe early college if you're late to the game like I was, <laughs> and you know just a few things working on, be understanding if people aren't wanting to hire you right away that it's not because you're not a good person. It just, they may be looking for certain requirements. And when you do get a job that's not what you think that is like, oh, it's not my level, like I'm better than this, you're not. <laughs> if it's your first job, you are not better. at. You are as equal to or, or less than anybody who's been working at that job for longer than you. Okay, thank you, Cliff, for being on the show. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.